All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another fun mod, this time in the form of Atomic Age Nuclear Rockets, which I apparently forgot to make a save file for. I was messing around at it in this save and I, I, I must have skipped my mind to make a new one. So there we go, sandbox and grab our flag here and head on into the game where uh, we are going to be having a look at this lovely mod which has been made by the glorious Pork Jet who of course has made many wonderful mods in the past such as the Space Planes Plus. So any mod he makes I'm happy with and thus atomic age nuclear rockets coming in and adding into the game two new nuclear engines so let's head into the VAB and have a look at these uh, yes those little pop-ups now I love the nuclear engine and nuclear engines in this game after the rapier engine they are by far my favorite engines that we have and the one thing that's always made me sad is this uh, little LVN atomic rocket motor is the only one we have. I mean, we've got so many different types of rocket engines, jet engines, etc. And any way, shape, or form you want it, uh, we've got at least something close to it. But we only ever had one atomic engine. And well, that saddened me because I really loved it and I would have loved to see more. And of course, well, in comes Pork Jet with Atomic Age and we get the Lantern Engine, which is awesome. It's similar in design to the uh, LVN here. Almost identical looking, really. Just a few minor tweaks to the visual, honestly, but it has a little something special to it in that it has two different modes. You have the regular engine mode, which just uses liquid fuel like the regular atomic rocket does, and you'll get some decent thrust, some decent ISP, etc. at the cost of liquid fuel. But it also has a afterburner mode as well that uses liquid fuel plus oxidizer and with that you get more thrust more ISP it's just wonderful now you do get a little less ISP in vacuum I mean the uh, engine ISP in vacuum for uh, the regular mode is 760 but for thrust it's 510 but you get hundred and twenty more atmospheric than you normally get for it and yeah that that is what I like so it's 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 a bit better of a nuclear engine in atmosphere in vacuum eh, a little bit worse but I like that you have the options and that you can switch back and forth between the two depending on your needs and that well that is just great so let's just pop one of these on here real quick uh, yeah just basic basic little nuclear engine. Let's grab the original atomic engine. Oh yes, I forget that they do the fairings. So, let's just... There we go. Up and down comparison. So, uh, yes, the lantern one is a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner, a bit more sleek. A few more tanks in here, but overall pretty similar in design. But, uh, I do like this little thing, and how does it compare to the regular one? So, this one has 60 thrust. This one, 40 on regular mode, 105 with the afterburner mode. Uh, this one, 220 ISP to 800. This one, 200 to 760. So its ISP is actually quite a bit lower, but it has a better base ISP with the thruster mode on. Intriguing, intriguing. Both good, depending on your needs. You just get you know, your little bit of choice. And again, I love that this has two modes. That's what makes this lantern engine so very special to me. But let's chuck you away and chuck you away. And look at the big boy on this mod. And that is the CCGC-7 nuclear light bulb. And this thing is a, well, a closed cycle gas core design uh, from the description in here from a uh, lovely Porkworks. <laughs> I love that name. And this baby is a powerhouse. It is massive. Let's grab that on. Look at the size of that beauty. Ah, it's glorious. And you gotta love the nice radiation symbol there. Just big emblazoned on it. 
with uh, a good two, four, six, seven engines on the bottom. Very no, well, seven nozzles at least. Very nice, a very cool. Outputs quite a bit of electrical charge. Max thrust of 450. Engine ISP 850 to 1500. And using just liquid fuel, but quite a bit of it per second. And well, that's just fun. And well, if that was all that this mod added in, quite frankly, I'd be happy. But Porkjet went a little bit further and also added in a new feature into all of these stock fuel tanks, which makes me even happier. So let's grab, uh, say, this orange fuel tank here. Perfect size for this lovely bulbous engine. And well, this one just uses liquid fuel. So, one of these normally would be f full of liquid fuel and oxidizer, and well, we quite frankly wouldn't need that with this. So, right click, and you can change the tank setup with this mod. Now, you don't have to. This mod comes with two separate downloads. One with just the engines, which, again, acceptable, acceptable, very cool. And the second download includes the engines plus this tank adjustment feature and you just click this and we can change any stock fuel tank to liquid fuel or to oxidizer etc and back to normal and it works with uh, basically any tank on here uh, all the stock tanks you can just switch back and forth between them all and that is just beautiful so what I want to do is actually build a crappy little ship here nothing too fancy because I just want to pop this thing into orbit with hyper edit and uh, see these engines in action. Let's just pop you on. There we go. Oh, no, I want an SAS because you all know my flying ability or lack thereof. So let's grab you. I don't know why I'm adding a separator on this, really, because we're just going to be using this engine stage. But, oh, well, c'est la vie. It'll be fun. And let's add uh, six of these in here. Uh, let's do the angled. There we go. Snap it on. And then, uh, well, let's make sure that this one is liquid fuel only, because, of course, this engine only needs liquid fuel. Then, let's grab onto this. Where's that fuel tank I'm wanting? This one. There we go. Pop that there. And we will switch these to liquid... Oh, no, we'll just keep them as the basic liquid fuel and oxidizer, because we'll use the thrust mode on these with the lantern engines. Now, I am wanting to change the action groups here so that we can switch the modes of these between the two modes. Uh, you know, just so we can test them out a bit better. And that'll, that should be good. We're probably going to need some stress to make sure this whole thing doesn't fall apart because, well, uh, that tends to happen with my ships. So we'll add that there. Crappy little quick design. There we go. Beautiful. It's not symmetrical in the slightest, but oh well. And let's grab just some uh, lovely little solar panels so we have power. Oh, uh, we should probably put those to an action group as well, because God knows I don't want to be clicking all of them. And toggle. There we go. Save that. Launch. And we'll use hyper edit to get it into space. Though I'm also a little intrigued to just try to see if we could actually move with these engines. Yeah, we're going to try that. Let's just try, though, with the center engine for now. Because that is a very, very powerful engine. So let's just throttle all the way up and see what it can do. Nothing. Nothing. I, I kind of assumed that would be the case. And, ooh my, it is... Glowing nice and hot and overheating, 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 overheating. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's just put it into space. I figured it wouldn't move any, but with how much thrust it technically has, I wanted to see. So, Alt-H. There we go. Gotta love Hyper Edit, man. Orbit Editor. Let's put this baby up to uh, 300,000. Yeah, that should be good. There we go, we are in space. Let's open up our solar panel so that we have some uh, electricity. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's turn on the SAS. Go to Prograde. I do love this new feature over here, it is wonderful. 
Ha <sighs> and oh my god, look at how that engine is shaking. That is Well, quite frankly, that's worrisome. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, hello. Stop shaking, please. It seems very strange, because it's solid here where it's connected to the fuel tank. Oh, is that oh yeah, it's it's a gimbling engine. And so it's freaking out trying to gimbal in space to where we are trying to go. Oh my god, that's good. That's good. Oh wow. Let's turn that back on. It, it's kind of funny. So there's a thing. The gimbling on this engine definitely freaks out. I'm ho hopefully that can get fixed in the future. Oh boy. But let's uh throttle this baby up. And Leo, oh my god, yeah, let's turn off that gimbling. <laughs> Ah, and look at that engine effect. That is just beautiful. Oh my god, we are also overheating very badly. So that engine gets heated up very quickly. My word. So at full throttle, that is dangerous. Even at 75% throttle, it is slowly building up heat. I do love the particle effects for that, though. That is really quite beautiful. I, I like that. And also the glowing of the engine. Very cool. Let's, well, let's see how it's affecting our orbit. Getting quite a lot. And, surprisingly, not using a whole lot of fuel. Look at that. We still have loads of the fuel left. So, which is quite good. That's why I love nuclear engines. I'm always so worried about fuel that it's nice to uh, not have to worry about it so much with the you know, liquid fuel sipping nature of the engines. So, let's Throttle this one down. Shut down that engine. Activate the others. And they are currently on regular mode, so they'll just be using liquid fuel. So let's throttle them up. That's a very nice looking particle effect too. It looks different than the regular particle effect you get with the uh, bog standard stock nuclear engine. Good glowing of the uh, heating up of it. Does not seem to be overheating which is good getting us quite a nice apoapsis now with all those engines but let's change the mode from regular to after oh my god listen to that sound oh boy i like how the particle effect changed it is overheating because well we're in afterburner mode which is hilarious that that's actually really cool i like that it adds a bit more danger for you to get that extra bit of oomph. Of course, now we are in a uh, vacuum, so it's not giving us as much oomph as the just regular mode. But I really, really do love how the uh, particle effect changes on those. That is actually quite cool. I'm going to bring this thrust limiter down to about 75% here. And activate that engine back again. And just look at all of those beautiful atomic engines. It is just wonderful. And I, yeah, I'm really liking this mod. I love the atomic engines in the game. And having two new ones in the lantern dual mode engine, as well as the nuclear light bulb, it's, it's just wonderful. It, it gives new opportunities for, you know, what you can do out here in space. And new engines for you to go out into deep space on as little fuel as possible. And we have almost reached the moon. We've now passed the moon. We could have rendezvoused. And off we go. Ah, beautiful. Gotta love those nuclear engines. But yes, if you would like to try out this mod for yourself, just follow the link in the video description and you can give it a try. I would definitely suggest getting it. And I would suggest getting it with the, uh, the download that includes the uh, fuel tank changer, the, oh god, I don't even know what you would call it, the fuel switch, I guess, would be a good way to put it. That's a nice little feature. I, I would like that feature just in the normal game, to be able to switch between fuel tanks for whatever your need is. But, uh, yeah, give it a go. I hope you do enjoy it, and I hope, of course, you have enjoyed this episode, and that you come back for the next, when we'll be looking at yet another fun mod. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, use your afterburners. Later, folks!